What's up guys, Kudokun here. You know, I wouldn't consider myself a huge Dragon Ball fan, but I do find myself returning to the series now and again. I done watched all the animes multiple times, including GT. I'm also quite fond of a lot of the video games. But oddly enough, I didn't really like the DBZ card game. I mean, yes, I played it, but honestly, I never really had that much fun with it. I mainly just played around with it because it was DBZ related, and when we were kids, DBZ was kind of a big deal. Even going back now, I don't think the game was very good. It's just really poorly designed. Believe it or not, there's actually been multiple attempts to make a DBZ card game, including the original and the remake of the original. And funnily enough, there was a remake of the Naruto card game with Dragon Ball Z characters. I know guys, my mind was blown too when I heard about that. While this one's not awful, they added a lot of stuff to make it a bit more complicated. I think they were trying to give it more depth than the Naruto card game without realizing that the Naruto card game has a ton of depth already. And it just wasn't well received. I think it might have gotten like two or three sets, but it just wasn't very good. And now here we sit with another Dragon Ball card game. So, is this one any good, or is it another dud to throw into the pile? I don't know, let's take a look. There are three card types in Dragon Ball Super. Leaders, battle cards, and extra cards. Leader cards are easily recognizable. Not only are they the only cards that have two sides, but they're also the only card that don't have a cost. In the box under the name, you'll find the card's effect text. All leaders will have normal effect text, and their bottom effect will be an awaken effect. Awaken is how you turn a card to its stronger side. In this Goku's case, you can flip this card over when you have 4 or less life, and you get to draw 2 cards when you do it. So far, every leader lets you draw 2 cards when they awaken, but some of them don't always awaken at 4 life. Some of them awaken at 6 life, and there's even one card that doesn't awaken until you have 2 life. Leader cards will also have a power number. Much like in Vanguard, your leader card will be attacking your opponent for damage alongside your battle cards. This is what a card's awaken side looks like. You'll notice that it looks almost exactly the same as the other side, but the effects will be much better, the power will be a little higher, and this side is marked with an Awaken text in the top left. It should be fairly simple to tell which side is going to be the normal and which side is the Awaken on every leader card, but if you are having trouble, the Awaken bubble is how you'll know. Another thing you'll notice is there's not an Awaken effect here. Obviously, since you've already awakened, you don't get to Awaken again. Let's move on to battle cards, since they're the most abundant card you'll be dealing with. In the top left, where you saw Awaken Goku's Awaken text, you'll notice that there's a number. The Dragon Ball Super card game uses the mana mechanic seen in a lot of Western card games. You'll also notice a little blue circle next to the 1. That's a special kind of symbol. Your card gamer instincts will tell you that this card costs 2 energy, because there's 1 colorless and then 1 blue symbol. One thing you'll have to get used to here though is the big number that you see in the circle is what you'll have to pay. The smaller circles on the outside tell you how many of each card type you need to pay for the card. In Kind Saiyan's case, you'll have to pay one energy, and that one energy must be blue. So just keep in mind that the number you see is the exact amount you'll have to pay. The small circles only represent how much of that specific energy color need to be made up for that number. You'll notice an effect text just like the leaders. Again, pay attention to the colors that you see around the boxes, they'll tell you exactly what kind of effect it is and when it takes place. And of course, battle cards have power, because without power they wouldn't be very good at battling. Now one thing that is very different is the number here on the side. Again, like in Vanguard, cards in your hand can be used to give power to any of your characters on the field. One difference here though is you can use them on offense or defense. So if you needed a 5000 power boost, you could sacrifice this card from your hand to get it. You may notice a small number with a plus symbol here too. In Kind Saiyan's case, the number is zero. But more powerful cards like God Rush have a bigger number. Now it says 1 plus 10,000. In this card's case, you can get a 10,000 boost instead of a 5,000 boost, but in order to use more powerful cards like this, you do have to pay energy. In this case, it's one. You pay one energy, you get 10,000 power. While we're on this card, I'd like to talk about a special keyword here called Evolve. Evolve means that instead of paying its regular cost, you can pay a cheaper cost to play this on top of a card you already have in play. You don't have to evolve a card into play, but often when you do, it's cheaper and you might even get an effect. Though if you do have the extra energy lying around that you're not using for anything, hardcasting these guys will give your field a little bit of beef. 
There's no character limit or battle card limit, so feel free to have as many Gokus in play as you like. Finally, we look at our last card type, Extra. There's our energy cost, and here's what the card does. Every extra card will explicitly tell you when you are allowed to activate it. In this case, you can activate it during your main phase. Extra cards cannot be activated during your opponent's turn unless they have the keyword counter. If a card does have the keyword counter, it will also have a word telling you when you're allowed to use it. Some cards nullify attacks, for example. If it's a one-time use effect like this, you use it and then put it in the drop zone. Though there are also special cards called field cards. You can only have one field card in play at a time. Now let's move on to the fun stuff, how to actually play the game. Shuffle your deck and put it in the deck area. Your deck should include 50 cards and have no more than 4 of a specific card name. Your leader should be placed next to the battle area face up. It is your main battling card after all. Next, decide with your opponent which one of you will go first. Use whatever method you like, though I find a 6-sided dice to be the easiest. Once it's decided, each player draws 6 cards from the top of their deck. Once you get a chance to look at your opening hand, you can throw any cards that you don't like back into the deck, shuffle, and draw that many cards. You mainly want to do this with high cost cards that you're not going to need early. After you've redrawn, place 8 cards in your life area. When this area has 0 cards in it, you lose. There is no attack once your opponent has no life cards here, it's just when you hit 0, the game's over. At the beginning of each of your turns, you're going to draw 1 card from your deck. Though if you're going first, you skip this. Now if you have any rested cards, or sideways cards, you can turn them face up. During the first turn of the game though, you won't have any of these. Every turn you can take one card from your hand and put it in your energy area. It's recommended you put them upside down so they don't get confused with anything else. You can also choose not to do this, but if you do choose to do it, you have to choose to do it before your main phase begins. You can't play a bunch of cards and change your mind and do it later, you have to do it now. This should be obvious, but at the beginning of the game you'll want to start by doing this with all of your high cost cards that you can't use yet. Would have been nice to have a Super Saiyan 3 Go Tanks, but just not very useful right now. If you built your deck correctly, we'll see another one. Next up is our main phase. The main phase is slightly different from other card games you might have played, so pay attention. The main thing you can do is pay energy to put battle cards in play. Like I mentioned before, there's no limit to the number of battle cards you can have in the battle area, and there's also no limit to the amount of the same card you can have in play. Some cards will have effects that only activate during the main phase. Please don't forget about them. Leader cards can awaken during either player's main phase as long as its conditions are met. Unless there's something special about the card, you'll want to do this as early as possible. So for example, if we have Super Saiyan God Son Goku in play, and his activation effect is, if we have 4 or less we can awaken, then as soon as we hit 4 damage, we want to turn him over. Finally, we need to talk about battles. Unlike many other card games you might have played, this game does not have a battle phase. Not a dedicated one anyway. During your main phase, you can choose to initiate battle phases as many times as you like. As long as you have at least one active character or your leader card, you can declare an attack. We'll talk about battle in a second, but for right now, I must say that there is no summoning sickness in the game. So yes, you can declare an attack, and then drop another card from your hand and declare an attack with that card as well. When you declare an attack, you must select a target. In this case, we'll use our Goku leader card to attack our opponent's Frieza leader. When you declare an attack, any activated effects your card has will activate as soon as the attack is declared. When our leader attacks, we can choose one blue energy in our energy area and activate it. If we want to use this effect, we have to use it now when the attack is declared. If we forget to do it now, then we just don't get the effect at all. Now that our attack has been declared, let's check our power. Right now we're sitting at a cool 10,000. Our opponent is also at 10,000, so in a case like this, our attack would go through. If there is a tie, then the attacker wins. If this were the case, then Frieza could take one card from their life area and put it in their hand. If after the attack our opponent were eligible for Awaken, they could do it now. But there's one more bit of battle that we have to talk about. The Dragon Ball Super card game uses a mechanic called Combo to allow you to sacrifice cards from your hand in order to get power boosts. There's a bit of a gambling element to Combo, so let's go over it now. Let's say, for instance, that we're not sure our attack is going to go through. We play God Rush's 1 energy cost and gain the 10,000 power. Now we're at 20,000, but let's say that we're extra extra unsure. We'll also combo Videl for the free 5,000 power boost. This gives us a grand total of 25,000. In order for Frieza to successfully block this attack, they have to have at least 26,000 power. 
Once we've finished comboing cards, our opponent has a chance to combo cards as well. It's important not to get into the habit of overpaying for attacks. You could just be burning a bunch of resources for an attack our opponent was going to let through anyway. One other neat thing about combos is you can choose to sacrifice in-play characters who are inactive as well. So if we want to, we can sacrifice our kind Saiyan Goku to get its plus 5000 power boost. The defender can do it too, so don't forget about it, it could save your life. If the defending player has a blocker like this card here, they can switch it from active to rested to change it to the new target of the attack. Now Goku's attack is attacking Sorbet instead of Frieza. Might be a good idea to keep a few blockers in your deck just in case. Same rules apply though, the opponent can now discard cards from their hand to power up Sorbet. Since we're attacking with 25,000, they might just want to let the 1,000 power die. One important thing to note though is, if the attacker loses the battle, the attacker is not destroyed nor receives damage. The attack is merely cancelled. However, if the attacker is higher, then the defender is either discarded or, if it's the leader, the leader takes one damage. When attacking, you don't always have to attack the leader if you don't want to. You can choose to attack any rested battle cards on your opponent's side of the field. So if something's going to be a problem later, you can attack it instead. Keep this in mind when you're choosing who you attack with, because as soon as you attack with a character, it'll be rested, and as soon as it's rested, your opponent can destroy it during their next turn with an attack. There are four colors in the game, blue, yellow, green, and red. There aren't specific characteristics to each color either, so if you're choosing based on whether or not you like control or aggro, you're not going to be able to see it based on the color. At least not from what I've seen so far. Colors are instead based on specific combos, and a lot of characters have cards in the same color. Blue's going to be like your Goku and your Vegeta. Green's going to be characters like Cell, the Androids, and Broly. Yellow is going to be characters like Frieza and the Ginyu Force and everyone in Frieza's family. And red's going to be characters like Majin Buu and the fusion characters like Gotenks and Vegito. There's also black, but black is essentially colorless and it really only represents the characters from Xenoverse. But they're there too, you can pretty much fit them into any deck. So now that we've talked about how to play the game and everything surrounding the game, let's get to the big question. Is it a good game? I wouldn't really say that Dragon Ball Super is a good card game. I'd actually take it a step further and say that it has the potential to be one of the best and most fun card games of this generation. I am kicking myself repeatedly for not getting into it back in July when it came out. I really should have, and it's one of my biggest regrets. I should have gotten into it when it first started. Dragon Ball Super from the outside seems to be an impossibly perfect mix of fun and unique deck strategies, great player interactions when you're playing the game, and balanced gameplay. Now I want to go on record here and say that I haven't had a chance to play the game for myself yet, because there's not anybody here that would play with me, and there hasn't been an online form of the game available yet. But looking over the fairly detailed card list on Dragon Ball Super's official website, which will be linked below, it looks like it's a really, really nice set to work with. There are two main sets out right now and two extra boosters out, and at least 12 times when looking over all the cards, I saw some sort of game-winning strategy that looked really fun to play. Whether you like the Saiyans, or the Androids, or whatever Beerus' race is called, you will probably find something that you like, and it will, for the most part, be competitive. From what I've seen. I really, really have to stress that this is all from what I've seen, and not from what I've experienced, because this game seems like it could be riddled with power creep later. But again, it's also possible that it won't. This is all based on what the game is capable of, not necessarily what it is right now. As it stands, I really don't have any major criticisms of the Dragon Ball Super card game. I think it's a great pace, I think the deck variety is really fantastic, and I think it's built on some really solid core mechanics. I mean mainly because all of the mechanics are taken from other card games, but that's how the card game industry grows. It takes all of the great ideas from other card games, and uses them to make its own. I mean, come on. Red, blue, green, and yellow just so happen to be the four colors of cards in Y Swartz. The colored boxes around the keywords are almost identical to the ones in Buddy Fight. You start the game with an in-play avatar that levels up as the game goes on, just like in Vanguard. Not to mention the shield mechanic has also been taken from Vanguard, but you can use it here offensively as well as defensively. Also, don't think that I ignored the fact that all of the card's powers are in multiples of 1000, just like in all of Bushiroad's games. It somehow manages to fuse all of those ideas into more western game ideas like a mana system and blockers, as seen in Kaijudo. Whoa, wait a second here. 
You're telling me that the Dragon Ball Super card game found a way to fuse Bushiroad mechanics with Western mechanics to make one great card game that pleases both sides of the pond? Whoa! Check it out, Dragonborn players! It can be done correctly! Maybe someone should play a round of Dragon Ball Super with Mike Elliott so that he can take some notes! Ya golden boy messed up. Anime wins again. So aside from the slight lack of creativity, the only other thing I could really nitpick the game on is I really wish the number in the top left was slightly different. I can't help but look at this card and think that it costs 3 energy, because it has a 2 and then a green circle next to it. I mean, come on, in every other card game, the number represents how much colorless you have to pay, and the orbs represent how much specific color you have to pay. But it's not like it's something that's impossible to adapt to. In fact, I think I've already got it down, but it's just fun to complain about, and I don't really have anything else I can call the game out on. I think I might love this game. I haven't felt this way about a card game since... Oh, do I say it? Do I say it? Since Naruto. Despite not really having an area to put more cards, nor really the resources, I do want to support this game by buying some booster packs. I truly am excited, and I look forward to collecting for this game, building for this game, and most importantly, I look forward to playing this game. If you've heard about this game from someone and you just haven't really taken the time to check it out yet, I urge you to click the link in the description and check out the website. I'm happy to say that I will be supporting this game with content on my channel this year, and I really hope all of you are on board to join me. That being said, if Broly and Trunks are low tier garbage, then I'm dropping the game for sure. Bye! Hey you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock! If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. See you next time!